Did you know that about 47% of all visits to primary care physicians by non-pregnant adults older than 18 were made by patients diagnosed with hypertension? Clearly, any practicing nurse must master the blood pressure guidelines to diagnose and treat those patients effectively. I am Ms. Cohen, and today we'll review the ACC and AHA guidelines. We will cover the medications and lifestyle modifications that can help manage and even cure hypertension. Again, you need to know this stuff whether you are practicing, getting ready for an exam, or what the heck, even if you're not a nurse. So let's dive right in. The American College of Cardiology, ACC, and the American Heart Association, AHA, publish blood pressure guidelines emphasizing a patient-centered approach, considering individual risk factors and comorbidities. These guidelines establish the thresholds for normal blood pressure, hypertension in stages one or two, and so on. This material is tested on both AANP and ANCC exams. In the next slide, we'll review the table. First, a quick review. The top number in the blood pressure reading is called systolic. It reflects the blood pressure in the blood vessels when the heart contracts. The bottom number is known as diastolic. It represents the pressure in the heart when it's relaxed, at rest between beats. An easy way to remember this is to think as D in diastolic means down, the number in the bottom. So think diastolic D down. High blood pressure, also known as hypertension, can lead to serious health issues, such as high risk for heart attacks, stroke, and all-cause mortality. So it's important to check your blood pressure regularly to detect hypertension and prevent major health problems in the future. Now, let's talk about this table. Normal blood pressure is less than 120 over 80. Elevated pressure, blood pressure, is in between 120 and 129 for systolic. Hypertension stage one is between 130 to 139 for the systolic or 90 for diastolic. Hypertension stage two is 140 or higher for the systolic or 90 or higher for the diastolic. For hypertensive crisis, which is higher than 180 for systolic or 120 for diastolic, it's an emergency and the patient should be sent to the emergency department right away. So let's talk about how we can manage hypertension cases. The JNC, or National Committee on Prevention, Detection, Evaluation, and Treatment of High Blood Pressure, yes, it's a mouthful, but their mission is simply to create evidence-based guidelines for managing blood pressure in the United States. If you just Google JNC guidelines, you will likely be presented with a very complicated chart. The tables below summarize it in a way that is much easier to understand, so let's go over it. For example, People with diabetes or chronic kidney disease of all ages should aim for a blood pressure of less than 140 over 90. For the general population without these conditions, if they're under the age of 60, the target remains at 140 over 90, or remains less than 140 over 90. However, if they're 60 years or older, the target goes up to 150 over 90. We are more forgiving with the older population to avoid overprescribing blood pressure medications because it carries the risk of hypotension or low blood pressure that can cause dizziness. And you know, the next thing they can fall and then break a hip. Treatment recommendations are split between two groups, African-Americans and others. Research shows that African-Americans have a higher prevalence of hypertension and may need more aggressive treatment. Thiazide diuretics have been found effective in lowering blood pressure with better control rates compared to other medications when used alone. The JNC-8 guidelines specifically recommend that blacks, black adults start treatment with thiazide diuretics or calcium channel blockers alone or in combination based on clinical trial data showing less benefit from ACEs for black patients. For everyone else, start them with an ACE inhibitor or an ARB as the first line, but you could also use a ch calcium channel blocker, again, alone or in combination. So when should we begin prescribing drugs? We typically initiate treatment at stage one hypertension if the patient has either cardiovascular disease or risk factors. However, if no such risk factors exist, we may start with lifestyle modifications and delay pharmacological treatment until patient reaches stage two hypertension. 
we've already reviewed the specific blood pressure thresholds in the previous chart. I encourage you to have those numbers memorized. Next, let's talk about choosing the right medications. The selection of antihypertensive drug depends on the patient's unique characteristics, including age, comorbidities, and ethnicity. Additionally, we follow specific guidelines for certain populations. Patients with chronic kidney disease, also known as CKD or diabetes, ACE inhibitors and ARBs are preferred due to their kidney protective properties. Older adults, their target blood pressure is often more lenient. Pregnant women, we must be very cautious with drug choices to avoid harm to the fetus. You will find blood pressure medication specifics to this population under the Cohen Review Lectures Pregnancy Review. And remember that women in menopause produce less estrogen and are consequently more prone to osteoporosis. So we would prescribe thiazides for their calcium sparing properties. For more details on the various drug classifications, side effects, and more specific guidelines, I encourage you to visit the Cohen Review Cardiovascular Lectures where we cover these topics in depth. Lastly, we must not forget about lifestyle modifications. In many cases, hypertension can be prevented or reversed with just lifestyle changes. It's critical to educate your patients on this. What are some preventative measures and lifestyle modifications? Let's review. Number one, exercise. Encourage moderate to vigorous activity three to four times a week for about 40 minutes per session. Two, diet. Recommend the DASH diet, which stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension, which emphasizes vegetables, fruits, whole grains, fat-free or low-fat dairy, fish, poultry, beans, nuts, seeds, and healthy vegetable oils, limiting fatty meats, full-fat dairy, and sugary beverages. Three, weight loss. Advise patients to lose weight if they are overweight, as excess weight contributes to hypertension. Four, stress management. Encourage techniques such as deep breathing to help manage stress levels. Number five, sleep hygiene. Ensure patients understand the importance of getting enough rest, as this is when the body heals. Number six, alcohol and sodium. Advise limiting alcohol consumption and reducing sodium intake, both of which can contribute to high blood pressure. Seven, smoking cessation. If your patient smokes, encourage them to quit smoking. Number eight, blood glucose and lipid control. We monitor these levels during annual physicals, and if numbers start rising, reinforce the need for lifestyle changes. If you're preparing to take the ANCC or the AANP exam and found my teaching style helpful, I welcome you to check out my website, thecohenreview.com. Find the link in the description below.